Hello and welcome to this pre-MRMW event interview. It's fantastic to be joined by Justin Wheeler of USAM. Justin, thanks so much for joining me today. Can you first of all uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure. So my role here at USAMP, I'm the Vice President of Product Innovation, primarily focused on mobile and in-context research, uh, which of, of course is why we're attending the uh, MRMW. Awesome. Uh, so first of all, it's conference season. Um, it's a very busy time for market researchers. Um, I want to know why you guys are attending MRMW in Chicago. What made it jump out in the calendar? Sure. Well, we've actually attended um, each of the last couple of years, and it's proved to be a very effective show for us. We both learn a lot and get the opportunity to meet a significant number of potential clients and prospects and just keep up on the industry and really understand what's going on, um, what's the state of the art when it comes to mobile research, both from the perspective of technology, panel growth, and the opportunities there, as well as just um, research methodology and, and how it's being utilized to solve specific business problems for CPG retailers and, um, and other uh, companies. Awesome. And I remember seeing you guys uh, at MRMW London as well. So is this kind of like a, do you often attend all those MRMWs that go on? We do. We very much like the show. Um, we think the organizers, in, in fact, do a great job setting it up and running it. Um, and we just also, again, like the opportunity, both, uh, both within the U.S. and internationally, uh, to keep up with the state of the art uh, for the industry. We like to think of ourselves as industry leaders when it comes to mobile and in-context research. And so it's really a good opportunity um, to keep up with competitors, uh, identify potential partners, and of course meet end clients who might have need of that type of research. Awesome. And so it's my understanding that you guys are presenting a paper, or you yourself are, uh, for you, Sam. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so we're, we're presenting a, a research study that we've been conducting for the last several months that really explores um, if mobile respondents have the opportunity to be more honest. And so it really what it explores is um, uh, cognitive heuristics around what's called satisficing. And that basically just means um, respondents will follow the path of least resistance um, when they are exploring what survey question, uh, what survey answer that they want to give to a particular question. They will find the answer that requires them the least cognitive effort in order to give you that answer, but seems reasonable in terms of providing a response to that question. And also social desirability bias. And of course that process is around um, giving the answer that will make them look the best to others. And our hypothesis has been that in-context research through mobile reduces both satisfying and social desirability bias among respondents. And so that's primarily the paper that we will be uh, presenting, uh, both in presentation mode um, and with a leave behind that people can take and really explore the depth of the research. Okay, that's interesting. Do you think that the reason for that on mobile is because it's kind of um, taking away some of the barriers some, uh, as opposed to face-to-face -face interviews or focus groups? Would that be the reason? Yeah, if you think about it, mobile provides the opportunity for in-context research, but also gives you a little bit of the uh, privacy that you don't have to worry about the person standing there that you're interviewing, much more like an online mode where you're at home. And so you're not facing that person face to face. You don't feel a responsibility to the human being that might be interviewing you at a store, for example, um, and trying to be nice to them. And so giving them an answer you think they want to hear. On a mobile device, you have privacy, but you are also close to the moment of truth. And that moment of truth might be when you're about to purchase a product or after you just ate a meal at a restaurant. So you're closer to when you actually made a decision or experienced something, but you also have the benefit of privacy of not having to be face to face with another human being and wanting to be nice to them. And so answering in a different way than you might without that. Um, so we're very excited about that. We've seen other research projects. Um, AOL presented a, a study at ARF earlier this year mm -hmm. that explored the use of a mobile device itself in terms of providing survey responses. And they identified that um, if people are given a specific task on a mobile device as opposed to an online mode, that they actually give more accurate responses because of the nuance of dragging and dropping with your finger as opposed to doing it with a mouse. The exercise that those people were given was ranking five objects in order of size, and people were more accurate doing that on a phone than they were online. Um, and while that's great, it, that explores the accuracy of that research in terms of the technology, uh, we're much more interested in terms of the research psychology 
um, and not relying on cognitive heuristics, those people in the moment, in context, can actually provide more honest responses than people who are out of context in an online mode sitting at home. So for certain types of research, uh, mobile provides the opportunity to be as accurate as possible because it's the closest thing to that moment of truth. Um, and it, uh, also it's very scalable because everyone carries a smartphone with them. For sure. I was just about to point out on that. Um, I was speaking to a researcher uh, just last week, and, and they described mobile and smartphones as almost an extension of self. It's just so natural now. So I wonder if do you see that as the reason for perhaps these more honest responses? It's just that you kind of it takes the stigma away of uh, of maybe responding to an answer, so you don't have to go out of your way to then go onto a computer or to go and meet somebody. It's it's very much an instinctive kind of movement now. Jack, I think that's, that's exactly right. Um, we find that uh, our mobile panelists do not find the process of taking a mobile survey, an, an in-context mobile survey, disruptive to their workflow as a consumer. Because we're also used to using our mobile phones in a grocery store or in a restaurant. They're in front of us all the time. The average person is looking down at their mobile device at least once every three minutes. So looking down at your mobile device to maybe check pricing on something, uh, maybe send a text to your significant other asking if you're buying the right thing or answering a survey question that we're asking them is all part of the same process. We also think there's something to the fact that consumers form a very intimate relationship with their mobile phone in a way that they don't do necessarily with their computer. And part of that is the fact that it is with them all the time. They always have it with them. You don't want to always have your computer with you. Um, it does feel like an extension of your arm. But the other part of it is that you tell very intimate things to your mobile phone over time because you're speaking to people on the other end of that device that you may love or hate or whatever. So you tell very intimate things to that phone. You tell your, your wife, your girlfriend, your husband, whatever, I love you, but you're saying it to your phone. You're not saying it to their face. So you actually end up forming a very strong emotional bond to the device that's in your hand. What that translates to in terms of research is that you are willing to share more intimate information with that device than you might through other modes. Yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. And I know myself, I spend a lot of time with my smartphone, so I can yes. I can see that. I can see that. Of course. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And so just to move on a little, um, have you noticed any other um, presentations that can be made at this MRMW? Is there anything caught your eye that you're looking forward to seeing? Sure. Um, so we have several clients that, that it looks like are going to be presenting there. And we're very excited to see uh, General Mills is presenting, Ryan Backer. Um, we know the type of work that they do, and also we just know the type of researcher that he is, so we're very excited to see that presentation. Um, they're extremely progressive about their adoption of mobile and in-context research. Um, they've worked with us as well as other vendors, so we know that they really understand how effective the mode can be and um, the types of research that it's very effective for. So we're excited to see it. We like the fact that um, they have significant experience actually pushing real products out into the world based on the mobile research that they've done. It has improved their intelligence as a company and helps them provide better solutions and products to their customers. And they also like it for the fact that it's, it's extremely intimate. It provides a, an increased level of intimacy with their uh, consumers out there, and they like it for that reason. We like it for that reason, too, and we think that um, that very much comes through in the type of research that you can conduct. Awesome. I really can't wait for this conference. It's going to be so much uh, great mobile content going on up there. Justin, thank Absolutely. you so much for joining me today, and uh, I look forward to spe uh, seeing you at the conference. Thanks. I look forward to seeing you there. Cheers, Justin. Bye.